But you guys, Windows 11 sucks without this. This is what we're going to take a look at today. And this is probably why a lot of people do not want to use Windows 11. A lot of it is to do with all of this, what we see on the screen, which is bloat. It's called bloat because it's all unnecessary stuff that people just simply don't use. You've got applications, you've got Copilot, you've got Recall, you've got all the other stuff like your privacy settings, your telemetry, all that sort of stuff that people just don't simply want. And this is probably why uh, Windows 10 still has 60% of the market share compared to Windows 11's 30%. Windows 11 has so much bloat that it just hogs all your system resources if you have a really low end system. And you can see here, you have to go through and turn off a lot of this stuff, which is really unnecessary. Most people don't want half of this stuff on the system anyway. And it's all the data harvesting and collecting and sending it back to Microsoft, which is what makes Windows 11 the most probably hated operating system ever. So before we can continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Once you create an account, you can click on the Buy Now button and use my promo code capital B capital R 9 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD Key Sales. Once you submit your order, they will then send you your key. You can use this key to either upgrade from Home Editions to Pro or you can use it to activate your version of Windows like you see on the screen right here. So I'm going to show you two programs which you can use, which is W10 Privacy. And this program is very in-depth. But what it does, what a lot of other scripts don't do, is it gives you an option or a choice to actually select what you want to turn off or remove or uninstall from the system. And this is giving you more control over what you actually want to disable and what you want to leave on the system. So this is probably why a lot of people have requested uh, this video because they don't want to run PowerShell scripts on their system, whereas what they want to do is have choice. And this is where this application comes into its own. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this and we're also going to use ONO ShutUp 10++. This is another program which you can use, which gives you the option to make choices about what you want to turn off and what you want to leave on. Now, what these applications do is give you options to be able to select what you want to disable and what you want to keep enabled. Because maybe you're using, for instance, the clipboard, or maybe you're using uh, something else like Copilot, and you don't want to disable it. And if that is the case, then you can just toggle the switch and leave that alone and remove all of the other stuff. So let's take a look in more detail of what this is. So we're going to go ahead and open up the W10 privacy here. It does work for Windows 10 and Windows 11, and it is going to be able to disable Copilot and also Recall and all the other nasty stuff that Microsoft keep releasing. So here is the actual application here. I'm going to go ahead and get this installed onto the PC. You might see Windows protected your PC. This is because it's an unknown publisher, but we're going to run this anyway and say yes to the user account control. And this will then go ahead and allow us to install our program onto the PC. Now, during the installation, uh, there is a portable installation, but it's recommended to use the standard installation. So if you're one of these people that doesn't like to use scripts or anything like that on your PC, then using something like these programs that I'm going to show you here are ideal. So I'm going to right click on the application and run as administrator and this will open up the application and what it's going to do is give you the option to go through certain categories and be able to check mark what you want to check mark and leave other stuff alone if you want to keep it on the system. So it is quite a powerful tool. It's going to ask you to create a restore point if you want to and I'm going to go ahead and do that right here just in case you want to revert back to uh, a restore point that was created before you did all the changes on your computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tabs up the top and have a look at some of the options. So the first tab is privacy, and there is literally tons of privacy settings on here that you can change on your system. For instance, disable the activity history timeline, and you can see there, there is also disable the application telemetry, 
Disable Windows Consumer Experience Improvement Program, and the list goes on. I'm not going to go through every single one of these with a fine tooth comb because there is, quite frankly, so much on here, it's going to take literally an hour just to go through and talk about just a few of these. Now, green are pretty safe to remove. You've also got the yellow ones here, which are still okay to disable. And then you've got red, which can affect the actual system performance by disabling some of these. You've got disable asking for feedback and there's send only basic device data back to Microsoft. All of these are settings which I would advise you check mark because this will stop all the telemetry and all of the uh, data harvesting that Microsoft like to do while using your computer. You've got the disable auto logger. You've also got do not allow the use of the built in camera in the lock screen. You can also check mark that disable inventory collector. Now, one thing you'll notice with this particular application is it gives you a lot more information about what you're actually disabling. Not only does it give you the name of what you're disabling, there is actually a box when you hover over the actual item, it will tell you what it is. For instance, when you uh, check mark these and hover over, you can see there's a little white box which gives you a small description of what it is actually disabling. And this is really useful for a lot of people that really don't understand what these actually do. So you can take your time and read these little boxes and take your time to check mark what you really want to check mark. Disabling clipboard would mean you would not have a clipboard to obviously copy and paste from your clipboard. You've also got Copilot here. If you don't like anything to do with Copilot, then you would check mark these and also disabling Windows Recall for logged in users and also disable Windows Recall system wide, which is what I would recommend you do. Now, once you've got all of your privacy settings done, you can take more time in doing yours. You've got the app section and there is tons of apps uh, section here which you can go through as well now remember some of this stuff you might need for instance do not let apps use your camera do not let apps use your microphone i would advise you leave those alone if you are doing streaming or content creation where you use your camera or microphone otherwise you'll be blocked and you won't be able to use those items and these are in the yellow section there the smart screen settings, I would advise you leave those alone because they obviously protect you when you're using your computer. And it's always advisable to leave uh, Windows protection alone just because uh, it is quite a strong uh, protection. So you can see also here, there is some other check marks here. You might want to read these if you do use a camera or you do use a microphone. Like I said, do not check mark these, otherwise it will block you. A lot of these lower sections here are for settings inside your privacy and security area where it's going to disable, uh, for instance, like uh, don't let apps access my name, pictures and account info and access your contacts and all of your calendar and things like that. So these are all your privacy and security settings, which you can check mark these ones right here. If you want to disable these by a policy, you would obviously check mark these and then run the setting at the end. So I'm going to quickly speed a lot of this up and then move on to the next tab, which is your telemetry tab. So again, this is going to block uh, Microsoft by using your firewall. It's going to add a bunch of IP addresses into your firewall. There's also one for your host file here, but this can have an effect on your PC because it's in red. So bear this in mind, you can skip this section if you want to. But if you do want to block IP addresses, which are known to Microsoft, then this is the area where you would add these in. And this would add these into your host file or into your firewall uh, rules. So I'll check mark these and speed this up and we can move on to the search tab. So I'm going to speed these next few up here and get to edge because I don't want to bore you to tears with check marking and going through every single thing. Now, Microsoft Edge is built into Windows. And again, there is an uninstall Microsoft Edge feature right here. If you are going to uninstall it, you're going to need to make sure you download a browser first because this doesn't offer you an installation of browsers in this software, unlike some of the other ones out there like Chris Titus Text Tool and other ones out there that I've showed you on this channel. So go ahead and download your browser and install it on the PC ready and then you can check mark that if you want to uninstall Edge. I wouldn't advise uninstalling Edge myself. 
I'll just leave it on the system. But if you're one of those ones that just don't want Edge on the system and run the risk of breaking your system, then by all means, go ahead and check mark uninstall Edge. I will show you it uninstalling Edge just so you can see how it works. And again, it will leave a couple of little um, icons or shortcut icons, but you can remove these once you've uh, rebooted the PC. Okay, so let's move on and I'll speed this process up. We're going to remove Edge and a bunch of other settings here by check marking these. Again, I would advise you to take your time and read through every single one of these. Yes, it takes a long time, but it's much more safer this way because it's going to allow you to be able to check mark what you want and remove what you want from the computer. It's going to remove applications, built in apps, and things like that. And once you're ready to go, and once you're finished, you can then select the item at the bottom of the screen and you can then save your settings. And it's going to go ahead and it might take a bit of time because it's got to uninstall some of these. But when it's done, it will restart your PC. And once you've restarted, you'll get back to the desktop and you can then uh, tidy up a few things that might be left behind on your computer. And I'll show you quickly here. There's a couple of little bits here. You can see Microsoft Bing Search. You can quickly remove that. It didn't remove OneDrive for some reason, but I'm going to go ahead and quickly uninstall these uh, manually by just clicking on the three dots and uninstalling them. So there's only a couple of little items it's left behind. And once you've done all of that, you can then move on to the other program, which is called Shut Up 10 if you want to. Pretty much you don't really need to use both of these, but if you wanted to, you could do. And these again are actions and recommended and somewhat recommended settings click continue it's going to create a restore point for you but remember once you use the somewhat recommended settings you will need to toggle the disable app access for microphone and camera if you use these on your computer and that's pretty much it you're pretty much good to go and this is probably the easiest way for people that don't want to use powershell scripts and want a bit more control over how to disable telemetry and data collection and also get back your privacy on windows 11 this does make the system a lot more responsive and again it just sort of gives you a bit more control over windows 11 once you've done this it's pretty straightforward and easy to move on to installing say for instance start 11 for your start menu if you want to or whatever it is you want to use for your start menu but you can see here now we have a pretty clean system very simple and easy to do without using any sort of PowerShell scripts and commands and things like that. And quite a few people have asked me to make a video showing options available for programs rather than using scripts. And again, this is basically as easy as it gets. You can use this method or you can use group policy methods, which is what I use, or you can use uh, scripts like, say, for instance, Chris Tyus text tool, or you can use other scripts, which I've shown you on this channel. There is literally tons of them and they're growing by the day. So choose what option suits you. This is a really simple, easy way of doing it. And again, you can easily, uh, like I said, de-bloat Windows and also turn off all of those privacy concerns that you might have with Windows 11. And you should have a much better experience with Windows 11. I would also recommend downloading Start 11 for the Start menu. And this makes the whole... Uh, windows operating system a lot more usable in my personal opinion anyway with that said i think that is going to be about it my name is ben brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on what methods you use or whether you even bother at all to de-bloat windows and turn off a load of settings i'll be interested to read your comments a quick shout out to all my youtube members who are joined my youtube members group i appreciate the support i shall see you on our brand new discord server for a chat if you want or I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.